Hey, welcome to the Quick Run Review. My name is Jordan, host of Alter Element Games, and today I'm going to be breaking down Ori in the Blind Forest. Now, when I first heard about this game at E3, I thought it was going to be another simple platformer, you know, kind of generic and stuff like that, but with beautiful art. But when I actually played the game, it was an experience that needs to be tried and played by every gamer in existence. Let me explain. First of all, let's talk about the presentation of Ori the Blind Forest. The astounding backgrounds is magical. It's not even parallax, it's like a whole new world and scenery is going on while you're playing the game. You can see thunderstorms and atmospheres and nature swifting and uh, swaying in the wind and just different types of activities in this beautiful painted setting, this fantasy world that is happening behind you and sometimes you can get distracted by it. The multiple sceneries and the layers and how they do stuff and how it scrolls in perfect unison with the foreground makes this game a lot, lot prettier to see. The actual animation to this uh, game, to Ori in the Blind Forest, is kind of like a mix between Disney and Miyazaki's, um, you know, his animations back in the 80s. It has that charm, that feel that the characters don't need to talk, but their body language actually alliterates the point and the feeling and the overall tone of the story. The narrator of this disembodied voice that kind of, you know, sounds godly and, you know, uh, ominous kind of reminds me of the Shadow of Colossus voice that guides you towards each Colossus and uh, that game was legendary in itself. So it kind of brings in a healthy mix of that Disney anime and that Shadow of Colossus like uh, ominous godly feeling inside the story. Now this story has one of the best openings I've ever seen in any game. You connect with both Ori and his friend in the beginning in the first five minutes without the voices only just using body language and the beautiful paced music makes it even more tearful. Um, I, I can't even think of the words for it. It's tearful, feeling, emotional, grasping. Every single term that just exemplifies beauty in this game it is made to describe Ori in the Blind Forest. Now this game friend Friendship tone feels like another game that I've played, and it's called Majin and the Forsaken Kingdom. Now, both of these games have a familiar setting with uh, the magical and whimsical world that both of these games hold. And the great co op kind of feeling and friendship is a really good factor that occurs within Majin and the Forsaken Kingdom. You know, you care about your character just like you care about Ori and his travels, and as he's growing into this world and trying to figure out and trying to move on and find this orb that gives this tree life. Gameplay for Ori kind of familiarizes itself with the Metroidvania style of gameplay, with good mechanics including dashing and well-timed jumps, and earning certain abilities gained by picking up soul links by finding spirits that will help you open up new chambers and doorways the further your progress in. Now the Metroidvania style is all like that. You have to backtrack and find certain moves and abilities or different gadgets to open up certain chambers to move on. And that's what this game feels like. But there is a lot of progression and moving on in the world instead of a lot of backtracking. So there is some backtracking but not too much. It's also a pretty challenging platformer kind of like uh, Super Meat Boy and Rayman Origins and it has some light RPG elements inside the game when you gain abilities. Your skill tree is an ascending skill tree which basically means that once you level up you're moving on to a higher ranking instead of split decision skill trees you have set amount of skill trees to progress further into the game which makes things less e less complex and more simple and easier to determine your path and where you're going and how to build your character.
Okay guys, so I'm gonna go off the script here and really describe how I feel about Ori and the Blind Forest. This game is phenomenal. It is one of the most heartfelt stories that I've felt since playing Nier. And that game is tragic on a stick, man. I compared this game to Super Meat Boy and Rayman Legends before, but this game goes beyond that. With the story, with the colors, with everything, the story tells its journey through the world, the, the experience, the gameplay, everything that mingles and intermingles together for one grand experience and I see that now there's hope for newer indie games like this for newer games to have both gameplay and cutscenes that makes the experience last a bit longer in your head and makes you want to stay inside the game and you didn't have to sacrifice gameplay to tell a story and I'm sick and tired of game companies and game directors, fake ass game directors, telling you that you have to sacrifice gameplay. No, you don't. And I'm sick and tired of hearing that. A game should not have super long-winded cutscenes like The Order 1886 does. It's nonsense. I don't want to pick up an object and look at it and twist it up or whatever for no, you know, for no reason. Just because your modelers spent a lot of time making this one piece of paper or this one uh, pot and pan or candlestick. No, we don't care about that. And long-winded cutscenes, we don't want to watch a cutscene for 10 minutes. Like, this is ridiculous. No long-winded cutscenes, basic ass gameplay, and poor AI pretty much describes Evolved in uh, the order, you know, completely. None of that. You don't have to sacrifice gameplay for your story to make it a great game. And this proves it. Ori in the, in the Blind Forest makes this point and gives you a brand new experience that you can go back to over and over again. I found myself going back to the Tree of Life and other areas just to find new abilities because it was fun. This game honestly feels like the old times where I played Mega Man and I wanted to find the armors from before and challenge myself to get, get up there because I've got newer abilities just like in Mega Man and it's it's seamless the gameplay is seamless with that with that Metroidvania style of going back and traveling and finding abilities to open new doorways and pathways that all intermingles together with the world because you enjoy going back to the world you enjoy hearing the story and you enjoy hearing the music Gameplay is integrated with the story and cutscenes are proper and they don't last way too long but they hit the point and they tug at your heartstrings. And that's what Ori the Blind Forest does. Ori in the Blind Forest is an amazing game. Games, I can compare it to games like Nier, Child of Light, and Shovel Knight are all examples of other games that mingle and intermingle great gameplay and story. This, all in all, deserves a A plus, even almost S class, in my opinion, once I finish the whole game. I'm not done yet, so I'm not gonna do a full review until I'm finished with the whole experience, until I'm 100% complete with this game. But this game is an instant classic, and everybody should pick this up. This is the best game of 2015. The best game, the best experience, the best story, everything about this game is the new standard for 2015 games. Let's go, let's have more games like this, and let's continue this tradition of gameplay first, or gameplay and story well done, and in a great mix to bring a grand experience. Well that's it for today's video, but if you want to see more, go ahead and click on my main channel, Alter Element Games. There I have videos ranging from gameplay highlights, full video game reviews, music soundtracks from some of the best games, and gaming and news updates. Keep it live here at Alter Element Games, and visit my fan page on Facebook and Twitter. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and thank you for supporting my channel. Cafe LA, peace and love, I'm out of here. Alter Element Games, where game